he's still home, he's on visit, so pray for him too. Amen? This morning I want to share with you, walk by faith, not by sight. I want you to understand that all of the Old Testament saints, they walked by faith and not by sight. They didn't have a visual uh, apparition, if you will, of God. They didn't see God in the flesh, because no man can see God and live, the Bible says. But they had a faith that believed in what God said. Amen. Hallelujah. They didn't have what you and I have right now in our hands. They believed when God said something, that God was going to perform the very thing that he said he was going to perform. And so because of that, now that we have his word in our hand, come on somebody, we have the word in our hand, we will believe, and I need somebody to get me some water, hallelujah, praise the name of Jesus, hallelujah. We need to be able to take what God said and believe what he said, and not doubt what he said. We walk by faith, not by our natural ability. See, faith is not natural. Faith is spiritual. Hallelujah. Here comes my son. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He didn't spill a drop. How about that? Praise God. Thank you. Hallelujah. We walk by faith, and it's, it's not something natural. Faith is something spiritual. See, if it was just us having faith, then there'd be no reason for God to give us a, the, a measure of faith. Are you hearing me this morning? I hope you're hearing me by uh, Facebook this morning. If we in and of ourselves had faith, there'd be no need for God to give us the measure of faith. But we are faithless in and of ourselves. But God has given us a supernatural, say supernatural, deposit of faith in every single believer. That's why it's supernatural. It's not natural. Hallelujah. And we need to start learning how to lean on the supernatural rather than the natural. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus said in Luke 18, verse 8, in the New Living Translation, Hallelujah. It's going to be up there in a moment. We should get that Jeopardy song, you know. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Listen to it. He said, I tell you, he will grant justice to them quickly. But, there's a conjunction. But when the Son of Man returns, how many will he find on the earth who have faith? Well, isn't God omniscient? Doesn't he know? To find faith means to find by inquiry. By thought, by examination, by scrutiny, by observation. To find out by practice and experience. When Jesus returns, now most of the commentaries that I wrote, I mean that I've read, sorry. <laughs> I haven't wrote that many. I haven't wrote any. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I have a lot of them. Amen. But most of the commentaries, they, when they're interpreting this portion of Scripture, that the answer to the question, will Jesus find faith on the earth? And the answer is no. You say, well, that's impossible. Well, what happened in the days of Noah? My wife mentioned this morning. See, Bible says that faith comes by and hearing by so when the word of God is preached, faith is an act is inactive in you. And it's your choice now to believe 
and allow that faith that has been deposited inside of you to begin to grow and to have experiences that will build trust. Hallelujah. So the more faith that you're, you're, you're um, challenged in, the more experience you're going to have that God is faithful. It's more than just the phraseology, God is faithful. It's a truth by experience. When you know that through the years that you have walked with him, that God has always been faithful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So they answer the question by saying no. And when I read that, I said, let me read it again. But when the Son of Man returns, this is ta talking about the rapture. This is talking about the second coming. And I believe, I don't care if you don't believe it, but I believe in the pre-tribulation -trib rapture of the church. I'm going to preach that till the day I die. I believe that Jesus is coming in a secret way before he comes in the public way. He's coming as a thief where not every eye will see him, but he's also coming in the clouds when the Bible says all eyes shall see him. Come on, somebody. When the Son of Man returns, I said, well, if this is the second coming, no wonder he can't find faith on the earth because most of it's gone in the rapture. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. There will be those that will have faith, but it's going to cost them. In Mark chapter 6, verses 5 and 6. Mark chapter 6, verses 5 and 6. You know the story, Jesus of Nazareth. He was God's son. He had the Holy Spirit upon him. And he said, and because of their, meaning those people in Nazareth, because of their unfaithfulness, because of their unholiness, because of their lack of respect, is that what it says? No, it says because of of their unbelief. He couldn't do. Wait a minute. Jesus can do anything. He can do anything. Why, why does it say that? Because his working on our behalf depends upon you and I believing him. Hello? We have to believe more with our heart than with our head. Because if you believe with your head, one minute you'll believe, next minute you won't believe. One minute you'll believe, next minute you won't believe. But if you believe with all of your heart, you believe with all that is within you, nothing is impossible. He said he couldn't do, because of their unbelief, he couldn't do any mighty miracles. He was the Son of God. Among them except to place his hands on a few sick folk and heal them. That's all he could do. That's all he could do. He couldn't do more than that. He wanted to do more than that. Can you see that in that scripture? He wanted to do more than that. But he couldn't do more than that because there was something blocking the very blessing that God had for them. Now, he went to the whole city of Nazareth. And because of their unbelief, unbelief, he could not do many mighty miracles. And I tell you, that's what's happening in the United States today. I'm telling you, you go into these third world countries, you'll see miracles. You'll see the blind eyes are open, the deaf ears are hearing. The dead are raised to life. You're seeing miracles happen. You want to know why? Because they don't try to figure everything out. They don't go with their intellect and their reason. 
They go with what they believe and what they read. And because of that, that initiates the faith that God has given them. And when you initiate the faith that God has given you, there is nothing impossible with God. The only time it's impossible with God is when you have unbelief. Come on, somebody. They couldn't do anything. He marveled because of their unbelief. He marveled. He marveled. In Psalm 12, verse 1, it says this. Help, Lord, for the godly man ceaseth. For the faithful fail from among the children of men. The faithful fail from among the children of men. They fail. They fail. The faithful. What does it mean to be faithful? It means to be faithful. <laughs> Full of faith. Hallelujah. See, the problem comes when you and I, we try to figure out the ins and the outs, the ups and the downs, on how God could possibly do it. When God says, I didn't ask you to understand everything. I asked you to believe it. Hallelujah. You and I are not going to understand Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. There's no way. If we do, then we're God. We're not going to figure out everything. God's not going to give us the answer to everything. That's why you walk by faith, not by sight. Verse 2 of that psalm says, They speak vanity, everyone with his neighbor, with flattering lips and with a double heart, do they speak? Now hear that. The faithful fail. He's talking about those faithful that have failed. Why? Because they speak vanity, each one with his neighbor, with flattering lips, and with a double heart do they speak. One minute they believe God, next minute they don't believe God. One minute they believe God, next minute they don't believe God. One minute they think God can, next minute they think God can't. But what does God's word say? How do we understand what God is requiring of you and I? James chapter 1 verse 6 and verse 7. When you're praying to God and you're asking Him for something, the Bible says, but let him ask in. What is faith? Yes. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. I like the word, faith is the evidence of things believed the evidence of things hope is the evidence of things I'm sorry I got that wrong faith is the substance of things hope for the evidence of things wait a minute not seen you don't see it To believe it. Hear me. You don't see it to believe it. You believe it. Then you see it. Hallelujah. That's why when God says that you're healed. And he tells you that you're healed. Then you're healed. No matter what you see. Hallelujah. Come on somebody. Hear what I'm saying to you this morning. But let him ask in faith, nothing 
Wavering. Can you put that in the NLT for me? But when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Not in any person, not in any system, not any positive confession. Hello? You can positively confess all you want to. It ain't going to happen. It's not about positive confession. Come on, somebody. It's about positive possession. When you know the promises of God and you stand on those promises and you speak out those promises, it's not about a positive confession. It's about a, 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 it's about a positive profession. You profess what God says. He said, but when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Now, here's the instruction of the word. Don't get mad at me. <coughs> Do not waver. Yes, no. Yes, no. Will he? I don't know. But I'm having faith. No, you're not. Hallelujah. I remember a good old brother, Brother Bob Rodelay, many years ago. I used to call him Radio Man because he had a radio to his ear wherever he walked. He just kept that radio. Some of you know who he is. One time he came for a healing for his eyesight. He had thick, thick glasses. And I believe it was uh, Brother uh, Little David, Evangelist Little David. Came to the church and he had a healing line and Brother Bob Rodelay was in line. When he got to the preacher, the preacher says, okay, brother, what do you want? He said, I want to be healed of my eyes. The evangelist said, do you really believe that? He said, yes. He said, do you believe I'm a man of God and that God, I hear God's voice? He said, yeah. He said, then would you do something if I tell you to do it? And I, I believe God's telling me to do it. He said, yes. He said, okay, brother Bob, if you want to be healed of your eyes, take your glasses off and step on them. He said, what do you think I am, stupid? And he turned around and walked away. Okay, now see, that he never got healed from that. See, because the natural reason took over. The natural process of thinking. That gift of faith that God has given you and is in you is a spiritual thing, not a natural thing. Do not waver for a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown, tossed, blown and tossed by the wind. That's why the Bible says, trust in the Lord with some of your heart. Ah, you know the word, all of your heart. Don't, on your own under... In all of your ways, and he will what? Is that a supposition or is that a promise? It's a promise. He will. Say he will. He will. Wherever you read in God's word that he says that he is willing, you take that. You don't have to waver from that. He said, I'm willing. He said, I will. He said, I am the God that healeth you. He didn't say, I might be the God that might heal you. I might be the God that might deliver you. I might be the God that might help you financially. No. God's word said, I will meet your need according to my riches in God glory. God is faithful. He said, I will meet your need. Come on. And some of you have a testimony of how God met your need and it was a supernatural thing. You didn't think you were going to get that thing, but somehow, hallelujah, God answered that prayer because you had faith. 
You didn't know how God was going to do it. You didn't know when he was going to do it. All you did was believe that God would do it. Hallelujah. That's faith. Hallelujah. Verse 7. Such people, what kind of people is that? What kind of people is that? Faithless. Go back to verse 6 again. I'm going to show you what kind of people they are again. For a person with a divided loyalty, that's the ones that are unstable. The divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Have you ever seen an a ocean or a lake nice and calm when that wind kicks up, boy, those waves kick up. Linda and I were on the Sea of Galilee. We were in that ship, and we were sailing nice till the wind kicked up. All of a sudden, a little storm blew up, and that boat was going up and down, up and down. I don't want to do that too much because Linda will get sick. It came out of nowhere. But you know what? That's why I'm telling you that faith is something that God has given that is supernatural. It's a gift. He gives to every man the measure of faith. Hallelujah. Or a measure of faith. So that you can walk through this life victorious, no matter what the outward circumstances tell you. This takes... A person that is determined to believe God. That's all it is. That's all it is. It's a person that will believe God, believe his word, believe what he said, take it for themselves, and stand firm on what God says versus what every other person says. Some of you remember Pastor Dennis Monroe, Sr. Must be almost 40 years now ago, he walked into a doctor's office. The doctor sat him down and said, Dennis, I've got some bad news. And he said, what is that? He says, you have cancer running through your entire body. He says, we give you six months to a year to live. Now let me ask you a question. When God speaks, whose report are you going to believe? I'm going to re believe the report of the Lord. And the Lord spoke to Pastor Dennis and told him, I'm healing you. And he said to the doctor, Doctor, I respect your, your, your office, that you are a man that heal, you know, brings surgery to people and tries to help people live. And, and I know that this is a terrible news that you're giving me. But you're not the final say, God is. And he walked out of that office 40 years later, still healed. Because God said it. He said, my sheep know. Not just here, but know. That word know in the Greek is, is more than just an acquaintance. It's an intimacy of knowledge. They know my voice. He said that. But do not waver for... Okay, go to the next, what's the next one. Such people should not expect to receive anything. <coughs> anything. From the Lord. Gee, God, I, I hope you're going to do this, but I'm not sure. But Lord, I think you can do this. I said, but will you? My Bible says, No good thing will he withhold to them that love him. Yeah, but you say, But Pastor, what about those that are have faith and they're sick and they die. Well, 
They prayed for healing, but it never came. Can I tell you, God gave them the ultimate healing and took them home. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. That's not a cop-out, by the way. God knows what he's doing. Hear me now. Unbelief is sin. Unbelief is sin. Where in the sinfulness of unbelief, where does it consist? Number one, it's against God. It is the greatest reproach and undervaluing of God when you have unbelief. Uh, Isaiah verse, uh, chapter 7, verse 11 to 13. Isaiah 7, 11 to 13. Unbelief is against God. Ask the Lord your God for a sign of confirmation, Ahaz. Make it as difficult as you want, as high as the heaven, or as deep as the place of the dead. Next verse, please. But the king refused. No, he said, I will not test the Lord like that. Next verse. Then Isaiah said, listen well, you royal family of David. Isn't it enough to exhaust human patience? Must you exhaust the patience of my God? as well. Unbelief is a direct attack against God. As faith gives glory to God, you'll see that in Romans 4.20. Romans 4.20. Romans 4.20. Abraham never, say never, wavered in believing God's promise. In fact, his faith grew stronger, and in this he brought glory to God. That is the whole crux of the matter, is to have faith, in believing God without wavering, and that your faith grows stronger so that it will bring glory to God. Remember that one that came to Jesus and said, was this man born blind because of sin or because of his parents' sins? And he said, no, neither one. But this man was born blind for the glory of God. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Number two, it robs God, unbelief, it robs God of the honor of all of his attributes. It disparages the power and sufficiency of God. First, in not coming to him. Secondly, in trusting to something else. What then? We trust unto God besides God and above God. We render in our thoughts more powerful than God. When you have unbelief, it's an assault on God's character. Listen to this. Faith is not believing that God can. It is believing and knowing that that God will. Hear me again. Faith is not believing that God can. It is knowing that God will. There's a big difference. Many times, well, <coughs> can God do that? Yes. Will he do that? Well, I'm not sure. That's not faith. 
Hallelujah. When Peter got up, it was in that boat. And he said, Jesus, if it's you, bid me to come. And Jesus said, come. He didn't believe that God can do that. But he believed God would do that. He didn't just say, God, I believe you can keep me walking on the water. He knew God would keep him walking on that water. But as he was walking on that, he got out of that boat. Think about it. Think about it. He gets out of the boat in the middle of the water, the lake, and he's walking on water. Why? Because he knew that God would sustain him. That's what faith is. It's not believing that God can. It's believing that God will. That's biblical faith. I want to give you a quick story. <clears throat> In the first section of Bunyan's work, Pilgrim's Progress, anyone ever hear that book, Pilgrim's Progress? How many have read that book, Pilgrim's Progress? I got one student. God bless you. Amen. If you ever get a hold of that book, read it, Pilgrim's Progress. We are introduced to a man who lacks faith and conviction. His name is Obstinate. John Bunyan names his characters after their character. Obstinate, perversely adhering to an opinion, purpose, or course in spite of reason, arguments, or persuasion, obstinate resistance to change. Hello? I got this problem. I've gone to God 50 times. It hasn't happened. I'll try one more time. No. Might as well sit down. God is not, is not something you try. Hello? Can I get an amen? God's not something you try. That's why I hate that sticker that says try God. What do you mean try God? God's offended by that try God. That gives the assumption that it may happen for you and it may not happen for you. And if you don't like it, you don't have to accept it. God is the only answer. In his story, Christian tries to convince obstinate that their city is about to experience wrath from God and will soon be destroyed, and the answer is in the book he holds in his hands. Rather than listening, obstinate considers Christian mentality unbalanced and returns home rather than looking for the truth. Bunyan's portrays of obstinate as an opinionated, hard-headed individual. One who is obstinate is a grumbler and complainer. This person is mocked by a lack of faith. Lack of faith. Rather than asking God to examine us to find out why the thing we've been hoping for hasn't come. Now, one of two things will happen. Either God will tell you, hold on by faith, or you, you held on through presumption. I presume I heard God say. I thought God said. You will know when God says something. You will know when God says something. So I want to give you these five things about faith. Number one, let us pray when we pray in faith. Use the gift that God has deposited in you when you pray. 
Amen. Let us pray in faith. Oh God, I pray that you would touch such and so and so. If it is your will, stop it. If you don't believe it's God's will to touch that person, don't pray. Why pray? Why pray in doubt? What did God say? If anyone, if anyone will come after me, I will no wise cast them out. How do you go to him? Through prayer. Mark eleven twenty four. I tell you, you can pray for anything. And if you believe that you received it, it will be yours. Put it in the King James for me. Therefore I say unto you, these are the words of Jesus, by the way, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Now, I see all the little question marks above your heads. I pray for stuff, I didn't even get it. Well, because the Bible says, if we pray according to his, he hears us. And he says, if we know that he hears us, then we shall have those things that we ask. Hello? Are you hearing me? So when you go in prayer and you pray about something, and you say, Lord, you know, I, I need this, or, you know, God, I, this, this has to happen, or, you know, I, I want you to do this. And God, understand, prayer is, I say this all the time, a dialogue, not a monologue. Sit and listen. Instead of just giving him your whole list of stuff and then, okay, God, see you later. No, sit down, listen. Develop a, a hearing ear of what God says back to you through the word or through, in your heart. And so you pray this thing, and, and, you, and, you, and when you're done praying, you say to God, God, is this your will? me if God and that's very important if God says yes it is then you begin to believe and receive them by faith and you say Lord I thank you for that you believe that you have received them already you shall have them it's not a confess it and bless it and you know grab it and blab it no Grab it and blabbing it, confessing and possessing is things that you desire and you want apart from God's will. That's presumption. But when you go to God and God says, this is your will. This is my will for your life. This is what I want you to do. This is what, I, this is what I'm going to provide for you. I'm going to provide this for you. And he tells you that. Then you thank God. You begin to praise him. You begin to thank him for that already. Come on, somebody. You begin to thank him. Hallelujah. Begin to praise him. I remember one time, you see, you might laugh at this, but I take God shopping with me. Oh, yes. I took uh, uh, Brother uh, Bishop Andrew with me one day. He wanted to get, a, he wanted to get a, a shirt, and we went to Van Heusen, which was a waste because they're not there anymore. And then the Holy Spirit said to me, go to J.C. Penney. Didn't I just say a little while ago, in all your ways acknowledge him and he'll direct your path? Now, some people might think that's crazy, but I don't think it's crazy to take God shopping with you. you can, he can save you money. Oh, yeah, he can save you money. So I take Brother Andrew and we go into J.C. Penney and we're looking at the shirts and we pick up a shirt and it's $50. See, what they do is these, they think we're stupid. You buy one, get one free. So what they do is they jack the price of a, of a, of a, a lousy shirt, 50 bucks, and it's actually 25 a piece, and you, they still make money. 
So we went looking for a specific color shirt, uh, uh, like a, ma a maroon red shirt. Now, the ones that we saw were $50, $60. You know, he didn't want to pay $50, $60. And I said, but Lord, you said to come to with J.C. Penney. And as we're getting ready to leave, I look up on the shelf over there, and there's a bunch of shirts in the boxes with the ties. You know, those, they have those boxes with ties, you know, the shirt and the tie. And we look at that, and I said, I said, brother, go see what size that is. And he walked over, and he looked at the size, and it was his size. And there was a, a pink tag on it. It was a mock down. It was one of the uh, ones they're trying to get rid of. It was $7.97. And it was his size. In fact, that Sunday he preached, he wore it here with the red vest. But that's not the miracle of it all. The miracle is when he got to the register, they gave him 20% more off, and he only paid $5 and change. <laughs> Hallelujah. You can take him. I could have took him to men's warehouse, and he would have spent $50, $60, $90 for one shirt. And I would have probably bought him one. But when you're led by the Spirit of God, he'll save you money. Where have you ever seen a shirt and a tie for $5.96 or whatever it was? The Holy Spirit knows what to do. Let us pray in faith. Amen? Number two, let us activate it by faith. Hebrews 11.6. Let us activate it by faith. And it is impossible to please God without. Now, what is faith? Evidence not seen. God loves that. God loves it when you can't see it, but yet you believe it. God loves it when you can't comprehend it, but you believe God. Believe him for it. He loves that. Because that means that you trust him and you love him. It's impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. Hallelujah. I remember times, and I think I've shared this with you. I remember times when uh, we were in the ministry and, and uh, we didn't have money to buy clothes. And Linda prayed, and what does the Bible say? Seek, ye God, seek you first the kingdom of God. Right? That's the first thing. What's the second thing? And his righteousness. And then what happens? All these things, meaning clothes and houses or whatever you, whatever you have need. Okay, he's not going to give you five houses. Okay. But whatever you have need of. And Linda prayed. And said, Lord, I don't have clothes. Okay. Now, Maybe she didn't have the faith of Mike Murdoch on TV where people come up to him and buy him five suits at $1,000 a piece. But she prayed and asked God for clothes. And one morning we went out. Remember that? Oh, we were out at night and we came home and there was two garbage bags filled with clothes her size. Right down to the skivvies. And she washed them all and she wore them, praising God and thanking God. She didn't say, oh boy, I'm not wearing that stuff. Somebody else wore that. No, God provided. She was grateful. We've seen... We were down to nothing in our food, nothing in our freezer. And 
I gave the last bit of our meals away that we had to somebody that was in greater need than us. That's been my life all, all, since I've been a Christian, right, honey? Even to sometimes at my fault. That afternoon, I get a knock on the door, and there's a man standing there with two bags of groceries with steaks and chops and chicken and potatoes and onions and everything else. Come on, I know this works, folks. I know this works. We've got to stop thinking in the natural and start thinking in the supernatural. We've got to stop believing God for signs and wonders again. We've got to stop believing God that he's going to save people again. Come on, somebody. We've got to believe God is going to start using us to lead people to Christ. Amen? So let us pray in faith. Let us activate it by faith. Let us receive in faith. Romans 4.20. Romans chapter 4, verse 20. Abraham never wavered in believing God's promise. In fact, his faith grew stronger, and in, his, in this he brought glory to God. I've said that before. Let us receive in faith. When you receive something in faith, don't waver. When that waiver starts to come and it starts to bombard your mind, oh, God ain't going to do this. Oh, it's just going to be the same old story all over again. Rebuke it. As I said last week, taking into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. But you have to fight the battle. God won't fight that battle for you. You've got to stand. As Vicky said in, during song, we've got to do our part. God will do his part if you do your part. Hallelujah. Let us release it by faith. So you got let us pray in faith. Let us activate it by faith. Let us receive in faith. Let us release it by faith. Matthew 18, 18. I tell you the truth, what, whatever you forbid on earth, put it in the King James. I like that one better. <clears throat> Verily I say unto you, this is Jesus, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be what? And whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed on heaven. Let us release it by faith. God, I pray in the name of Jesus. And I bind every hindrance that's coming against this person in my family that I'm praying for for salvation. I pray, God, that you remove every, every bondage, you remove every barrier in their life, remove the blindness from their eyes. I bind those things in the name of Jesus. And the next time I come in contact with them, let their eyes be open, let their ears be open. I loose them to hear the gospel through me. Can I tell you, earthly wisdom will not do it. Because earthly wisdom, according to the Bible, is devilish. But the wisdom, wisdom from above the Bible says is first pure, gentle. Come on, somebody. God will give you wisdom. He'll give you the words you need to speak. I'm telling you, you can speak the words that God speaks, and it can break a bondage just like that. You can have somebody that's an alcoholic or a, drunk, a drunkard or somebody that's a drug addict or somebody that is in, in, involved with pornography or whatever, and God can give you the words, not your words, his words, to break that very bondage in their life just like that. And let faith, number five, Accomplish its intended purpose. Second Corinthians one twenty. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Second Corinthians one twenty. For all the promises 
Nah, let's change that to some of the promises. For all the promises of God in Him, in Jesus, ah, no. All the promises, say all, the promises of God in Him, in Jesus, ah, what? Unto the glory of God. But look at those other two words at the end. By us. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. If this don't get you excited, I don't know what will. For all the promises of God, every single promise, I am the God that healeth thee. I will make you the head and not the tail. Come on, somebody. I'm the God that heals you. I'm the God that delivers you. Hallelujah. I will deliver you from this Pharaoh that's been chasing you all of your life, and you will not see this Pharaoh anymore. Be still and see the salvation of your God. All the promises of God are yours. And they're yes and amen. Are you hearing me? They're yours. They're yours. All you got to do is ask. God says, ask for the heathen, and I'll give them to you for your inheritance. Just ask. Lead me, Lord, by your spirit. They that are the children, those that are led by the spirit, the Bible says, are the children of God. If you're led by the spirit, not by your flesh, not by what you think and your rational thinking, but be led by the spirit. I'm going to close with this story. I'll give you the five again. Let us pray in faith, Mark 11, 24. Let us activate it by faith, Hebrews 11, 6. Let us receive in faith, Romans 4, 20. Let us release it by faith, Matthew 18, 18. And let faith accomplish its intended purpose, 2 Corinthians 1, 20. When I was about ready to go to Zion, this was many years ago before I was even married, one of the criterias of being in Zion is you needed to have a black suit. And so I prayed and I said, God, you know I don't have much money. I need a black suit. And he said, go to Gentleman's Warehouse. It used to be on Sawyer Street. There's a, right behind the little white church there is now an electric company, electric uh, company there. But that used to be Gentleman's Warehouse. The Lord said to go in there, and I went in there, and I went into my, the section where I'm, for my size. There was not a black suit around at the time of my size. There was not, I looked through the, the higher you know, uh, sizes, the lower sizes. I looked everywhere in that men's section for that suit. And I stopped and I said, God, I must have missed you. I said, but I don't believe I did. I believe, God, that you said to come here. And if I'm here, then there's a suit here somewhere. And when I said that there's a suit here somewhere, the Lord said, go into the ladies' section. Now, if at this point you begin to start reasoning with God, you'll lose it. But God, I'm not, a la I'm not a lady. I'm not a transvestite. What do you want me to go in the ladies' department for? But he said, go into the woman's department. And I walked into the woman's department, and he said, go where the woman's suits are. And as I was approaching the woman's suit department, it appeared to me that on one of the racks over there was a black garment and I walked over there and I pushed the clothes aside and I looked at it and I almost had a hissy fit right there it was a three piece black striped suit exactly what I wanted exactly my size 
I don't know who put it there beforehand. I don't know how it got there. All I know is that God put it there so nobody would buy it because it was mine. Even before I asked. Hallelujah. These, I'm telling you the truth. These things happen to me. They're real. Have faith and shun all unbelief. God is faithful. Who he says all of his promises are yea and amen. All of his promises. Hallelujah. I don't know if we have any of those promise books left, but we used to hand out those promise books all the time. Maybe I should get a few more and give it to people. That All of the promises that God has said in his word, Believe it. Don't let unbelief grip your heart. When he said, I am with you always, even to the uttermost parts of the earth, meaning that if you go into the mission field or you go out and serve God, no matter where you go, he's with you. Yeah, but God, I don't feel you. It's not about feeling God. It's about believing God. It's about having God. It's about trusting God. Even when it looks like it's all falling apart. Always remember, God is the one that can put it all back together again. Amen. But we walk faith. Can you stand with me in closing this morning? Can you say it with me? For we walk by faith. We walk by faith, not by sight, not according to what you see. Faith is the hopes of things not seen. You can't see it, but you can believe it.